Welcome to Equip2, my name's Bert Hart, the General Manager here at Equip2. Today we're going to be doing a walkthrough video on the Keystrack B3 Jaw Crusher. So this machine's in the 30 ton class and it runs a metre by 650 jaw opening. So nice and easy, easy to transport and also giving you that decent opening size in the jaw. This first we'll start at the control panel here, nice and simple, very much the same as all the other keystrap machines and it's running an umbilical cord and also a 10 function remote. So once the machine started we can actually do everything from here on the remote control, we can have this up in the excavator or in the loader and we can do auto start which machine starts all up in sequence and then we can um, do functions like adjust the jaw sizing so that can be done on the fly which we'll talk about soon we can adjust the feeder speed and we can also stop and start the feeder and in some models we can actually lift the mag belt up and down in recycling application and of course this is the same function where we're going to be tracking the machine so if we are going to operate this machine in a application where we want to do a win row, we don't have a loader to take out, we can track the machine while we're also feeding the plant. So here we are now up in the hopper of this B3. As you see, this machine is lined with extra hard ox lining, 6mm plate, and the backing is our Domex steel as well. So if you actually walk through this, you've still got a wear property in behind that. And you'll see at the base here we've got double skin and then flowing onto the pre-screen which is integrated with the feeder we've got a 1.8 by 1.1 metre pre-screen. So you'll see we've spec this machine with a 38mm punch plate and that's all bolted down. So the reason we, we predominantly go for a punch plate is you get a lot more open air than you do with the Grizzlies meaning that you get a lot more pre-screening done. So this pre-screen is the largest in its class. So flowing from there, we're going into our jaw stated before, which is a metre by 650. So that's got a, a level sensor, which means we can adjust the height that we want our jaw filled up with. So in a concrete application, we want this as high as possible to get as much material in the jaw, choking it up to give us the best production rates. Flowing through there, you'll see the cheek plates we've got split into three sections, so minimising our cost per tonne, so we're actually replacing just the bottom where the most of the wear occurs. Now in the keystroke jaws, very, very nice and simple to flip the, flip the jaws. As soon as we've taken this top wedge out, um, we've got a mechanical part that sits in here, we lift that out, throw it over and then place it back in. So it takes about three to four hours to do a jaw flip and that's for both sides. Also got a dust suppression pipe in here, so just minimizing the dust that could be caused, particularly in a recycling application. One thing that we really love, or our technicians love on these machines, is the access to the engine bay, to our filters, and hydraulic tanks so from a serviceman's perspective these are a great machine to work on so we're running the Cummins engine in this model and that's um, rated at 188 kilowatt and then going through to our load sense hydraulic pumps so this machine is very very fuel efficient we've got some good numbers around 15 to 18 litres an hour as an average and for a 30 tonne size machine that's just outstanding and you say how do we get that how do we achieve that it's done by decent flywheels, good heavy flywheels, and then the load sense pumps. So what a load sense pump does for you is it's, it's displacing the oil where it's required, and whereas a gear pump, that sends oil whether you like it or not. And then the way that you restrict or you change your belt speeds or your speed of your jaw or your feeder is by restricting that oil flow. Whereas with the load sense pumps, it's all done with an intelligence of load sense. And that also means that we can track the machine um, it means that our oil is not getting heated up, therefore the oil reservoir isn't required to be as large to be able to keep the oil cool. So further to that point, we've got steel hydraulic lines running through here. And the reason Keystrack run with this idea is it dissipates the heat a lot better than what it would be running just a traditional um, rubber 
hosing, which is somewhat insulated. So flowing through here, we've got our nice open accessible toolbox. And then in the area of safety, all our auxiliary lines for hydraulically folding the hopper and unfolding our side discharge belt. So you can see here, we've got our side discharge belt. So we can either have a choice of the material flowing at the side or bypassing the jaw. And you can see in through this point here, that where we change our chutes over, you can see the slide this out. So traditionally, a lot of crushers have got a, a swivel gate through here. Now the problem that we have with those is they can block up a lot easier. So you can see here, we've got 400 mil of chute and that's um, a lot easier flow, minimizing any blockages. And so to drop that, change it over, we're just dropping this little gate down here. Then we can do the same on this one, and that slides out. We turn it back around and slide it across to the side to do our pre-screening. So here we're gonna talk about the Keystrack non-stop jaw system. The reason I wanna spend a bit of time on this is because this is what really sets these machines apart. Where does it add value to a customer is if you are doing recycling, you've got any timber, we can adjust the jaw live and we can crush the timber or open the jaw up while it's running, minimizing downtime. So that material can flow out in the outfeed belt um, and then we can close it back up again and continue crushing. So we know timber is like a sponge, you can't crush it, but you've actually got to deal with it. So the way we deal with it is open the jaw up while it's running and then close it back up again. In that same instance, if we have a piece of steel that's unbreakable, the jaw has got three settings, so it'll, it'll sense that pressure through the accumulator and it'll open up. So in through here, we've got two massive hydraulic rams and then two rams which hold our toll in place. And so if it senses that piece of steel, it'll open up in increments of three times and if it's too large to go through the opening being 180 mil or 190 mil, um, we're gonna have that jaw closed down. So in the key track, it's very, very rare to break a toggle plate. That toggle plate is called a pivot plate for us, and it's not a breakable item. In that same case, the non-stop jaw system, when you close your jaws up, so we've got a close side setting of up to 45 millimeters, and that'll maintain that position through the wear life of those jaw plates. So it's not 45 mil when the jaws are new, it's 45 mil through the lifetime of those jaw plates. And the non-stop jaw system means that it keeps the material, the flywheels going at the same pace. If we have a, a blockage or something in there, it will open by five mils, but it's keeping that momentum while sending a signal back to the feeder to tell it to slow down a little bit, but not to a stop. So that feeder will keep dribbling in material um, so that it's, it's not having a five second delay of when these material not going into that jaw so it's all the time just optimizing the throughput of this machine. So we're here now by the fuel tank. So large fuel tank, as we said before, this only uses around about 18 liters an hour, but this is a stainless steel, giving you good protection, uh, minimizing any risk for rust. And going through to the magnet, this is a, a two-pole magnet, so giving high concentration to a centered point. And then the frame is made of stainless steel as well. And what that does, that, minimi that means that the lifetime of the magnet lasts a lot longer than what it does. So a lot of machines have got just a standard steel conveyor, and then your magnet's always pulling on that. So that minimizes the lifetime of the magnet. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this video. Hopefully it gives you some insights and why the B3 jaw stands on its own. Please feel free to call out to the team here at Equip2 or look us up on our website www.equip2.co.nz.